their work become transformed by the fact that it's no longer very difficult to make a video. In fact, I see at least three people making them right now. And that the notion that video becomes part of our participatory media vocabulary really changes things. So please welcome Matisse Bustos-Hawks to the stage. Good morning. Thank you. Um, so I'll just jump right into it because that was a fantastic introduction to what Witness is and what we're thinking about and how video is really changing. And I'm going to be speaking primarily in the human rights context. So just to just to give an overview, you know, really the kinds of people and the participants who are creating video and who are creating media, citizen media, about human rights issues has really expanded in the 20 years that Witness has been around. You have accidental witnesses, um, people like George Holiday in the United States who filmed the beating of Rodney King um, 21 years ago. Of course, people um, at protests like Occupy Wall Street in Egypt in Tahrir Square, people who are being trained, who are you know, given access to or have access to tools and who are promoting um, human rights campaigns through uh, visual media. Uh, Traditional documentarians, actually perpetrators, right, who are who are increasingly um, and have for a while been actually filming human rights abuses and then sharing them either for intimidation or um, accidentally, you know, thinking that they would just share it amongst themselves and then it gets leaked out. Um, in the center, this very fuzzy visual is from a piece that the uh, Egyptian blogger Viola Abbas has shared, you know, over time and created an archive of police brutality across Egypt. Um, there's a, there's a picture of actually some uh, folks in an Endroids community here in Kenya who are filming a piece about uh, forced evictions. Uh, their land was taken from them in order to create a game reserve and the fight they were doing. And then there are also uh, mainstream media outlets who are increasingly showing and screening um, citizen media. And the places in which citizen video and citizen media are being shared and shown are also expanding. So we have um, the case of the International Criminal Court who are looking at um, video testimony from uh, people in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo uh, on a case there of a, of a arrested and indicted warlord. Um, in the top right corner, there's a, a governor from the state of Guerrero in Mexico who is watching a video that a group has put together about a dam that is affecting, or the building of a dam that might affect their community and, and, and force, <laughs> you know, hundreds of, or, or I should say, uh, a few ten, tens of thousands of people from their homes. What you don't see is that there are 200 other people watching him to watch his reaction from the community. Facebook, of course, is, and, and other social media platforms become places that we're all sharing um, video. Uh, and then again, sc uh, screenings actually in communities that don't have access to Twitter, that are not watching things on YouTube either because of connectivity issues, um, and, and in some cases electricity issues, but where video can be shared from place to place in screenings or in rooms like this um, about issues that affect their communities. Um, issues that, that we're thinking about at Witness it, uh, include, as, as, as we have increased tools and increased access to sharing video, sharing media rather instantaneously, what about the identification of you as the creator as well as people that are in your pieces, in your video, in your media that may or may not um, choose to be there or information that you yourself may be sharing that you're unaware of. Um, so in the top right corner, a woman who is speaking out about uh, political violence and, and rape being used as a, as a political tool in Zimbabwe was willing to come forward and share her story, but, but understandably was very concerned about repercussions of her sharing her story. So how can we obscure her identity while she can still share the story without perhaps um, being victim of, of reprisal attacks? Um, the lower right-hand corner is probably uh, familiar to many of you. This is a, a crowdsourced um, site from the Iranian government in the Green Revolution protests pictures that citizens shared from protests themselves and then the government used to crowdsource to ask people to identify these people and so that they could be tracked down and arrested. 
And again, an example from Wyala Boss, who's using Bamboozer, the social media, or the, rather the mobile platform for live streaming. Um, there is a GPS option in many of these kinds of technologies that you can choose to turn on or turn off. Um, he's choosing to share his location of where he is and where he's streaming from, which is amazing. It's shareable to his friends. The police can also track that very easily. So one of the things that uh, we've been we've been thinking about is how an easy tool can be provided to citizens who are out, um, whether they're intentional or accidental witnesses. Um, we've been working with the Guardian Project, a group of developers, to create uh, tools in mobile phones. This is available on the Android platform at the moment. It's called ObscuraCam. It very easily um, and quickly identifies faces um, in imagery, both in, in photos and in video that you're taking, and you can quickly obscure them, pixelate them. It also strips out the metadata so that if you want to and can immediately upload something so that you can share what is happening, where you are at the very moment, but you're concerned about your location, your, um, your, your personal safety, as well as perhaps those in the crowd or people who are being, um, you know, people who are gathering, then you can, you can strip that information out. Um, incidentally, people have also told us that if they're friends with their bosses on Facebook, it's also really helpful if they have been doing things late at the night before and they don't want, um, you know, to share that, all of that information with their bosses. <laughs> Um, this image isn't showing up with some of the overlay that's, uh, that's here, but oh, it's coming. Um, we're also working on an app called InformaCam, which is uh, part of this larger project with the Guardian project, which um, a lot of the questions that come up with citizen video in particular is authenticity and verification. Um, news outlets and, and um, citizens you know, who are consumers of this information want to know, is this real, did this really happen when this person is saying it did, um, you know, in the location that it did. So some tools that we're trying to also think about are, is there a way that you can embed that information in metadata in, a, in an encrypted way so that as you're sending that information to a trusted outlet or a trusted source, um, they can have that to the degree that, you know, that information is verifiable embedded in the image. And so there's less of a question of, did this in fact come from this country on this date and in this incident as somebody is, is telling me and I have no other way except for triangulating other videos or other pieces of media to, to verify that. And we're also thinking about ways in which we can provide platforms in so that this kind of con this kind of media can be contextualized better. I think a lot of um, citizen media, particularly about human rights, often is shared, you know, very quickly because there's a need to get it out, either for your own individual safety or because you've got a connection at the time, you've got a connection and you've got to make it happen. Um, and then again, issues of, of authenticity and verification, veracity come up. Um, so how can we better contextualize that and provide a space for that kind of media to be um, shared? And, and one of the projects we just launched with a partner called Storyful is this human rights channel, which now lives on YouTube, and um, we are curating playlists based on, um, you know, themes and and um, and events that are taking place. And it's culled from media that's uploaded to YouTube, and then Storyful looks through um, citizen media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., to try and pull together, um, you know, a number of pieces that they can verify to the best of their journalistic ability, and then pull together. Um, uh, playlists based on that content. So we're really trying to, to reach out to um, people like yourselves um, with, this, with this project, as well as to journalists to let them know that it exists. And so one of the things I'd love to talk more about with this community is, are there issues in your regions that you are seeing and that you feel, you know, it's getting lost in the sea of, of social media because we're all consuming and producing so much of it that would be well to highlight here. Um, or, and we're also trying to think about translation issues and a whole lot of things that this community thinks about too. So um, just wanted to mention this. Um, this is just another, another, I'll close quickly, but just sort of another, you know, reinforcement about 
authenticity and about uh, about sharing and, and where that can happen safely. Um, I think what happens a lot of times with this kind of content is that there's not um, there's not a context for, for people who are maybe coming across um, a human rights media that allows them to sort of, there's, there's context missing a lot of times, there's so frankly a title that's missing, a description that's missing, and so things get flagged and things get taken down, and if you're, if you're locating your, your, your content in one location, such as YouTube, and it gets taken down, um, there's no archive of that. Your work has kind of disappeared into the ether, and so we also are trying to think about ways that we can, you know, share with people basic tips about how you can, how you can protect yourself from that happening. Um, so a lot of things there, but I'll, I'll close and then we'll have more of a conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine.